Hey everyone, Felipe here. Welcome to another Tower of Saviors card review video. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the new challenge stage card, Black Zero. Black Zero is a Dark Machina with dual active skills, which already makes it a pretty worth card to get in my opinion. So the first active skill is a CD7 skill with the following effect. For one round, the character's attack times 5, electrify enemies when attacking, and affected enemies will be inactivated for one round. This skill by itself is already pretty worth, and it already makes Zero or Black Zero worth getting in my opinion. Characters like that times 5 is pretty high, and it can be a really good burst option, especially if you pair him up with other active skills that further increase the damage another step upwards. Electrifying enemies is also really useful, since there are some enemies that require a controlling skill or reduce your damage unless they are electrified and affected enemies will be inactivated for one round. So these two effects will not be able to activate with enemies that are uncontrollable. However, being able to inactivate your enemies for one round could save your run, especially if you mess up your spin or if they have high attack and you need one extra round to deal damage. So overall, this active skill is already pretty good. It helps give you a high attack boost electrify your enemies and also inactivate them. So let's take a look at the second skill. The second skill is also a CD7 skill, where you explore the bottom two rows to generate light or dark runes, deal 200,000 non-attributive damage to all enemies, and for one round, single attack becomes full attack, and the character's damage will be dealt regardless of enemy's defense. So going by one by one, the first skill is pretty good in my opinion, since exploding the bottom two rows can help you get rid of problem runes, board debuffs, electrified runes, etc. Think about the, the electrified bottom and top row. This skill can get rid of one row instantaneously and make it easier for you to spin or get rid of all the runes, electrified runes. Additionally, being able to deal 200,000 non-attribute damage will be a snipe, which will help get rid of stealth shields as well as um, deal with enemies that respawn their minions as long as they have 200,000 or less HP. For the second effect, this effect is pretty much just fluff. Uh, I think it doesn't matter whether you add it or not. If you dissolve a group of 5 runes, you get this effect. So basically, having that effect doesn't change much about this skill. However, for the third effect, I think this is a pretty good effect as well because you are able to break the defense of your enemies. This comes into play more often when you're dealing with petrified runes, since petrified runes will increase the enemy's defense proportionally or exponentially for each petrified rune. However, if you break the defense, you are able to just bypass the petrified rune conditions. This second skill will pair really nicely with the first skill, since you get a times 5 attack multiplier and you can also break the defense if you activate them both at the same time. That being said, we aren't encountering a lot of enemies with high defense, and a lot of the high defense mobs that we encounter now have a skill that gives them a damage threshold rather than defense. So it will be a little bit more situational and mostly be used for petrified rune or countering petrified runes. However, yeah, in my opinion, this card is really well made, and for a free-to-play card, it's a really good card, so I definitely recommend you to get at least one Dual Max copy. What I will do is I will get a Dual Max copy and probably have one or two level 1 cards, just in case I can harpy them or level them up later on if I need them. Uh, I do that usually because this is a collaboration card and it usually doesn't come back that often, so in case I do want more copies in the future, I still have those level 1 copies that uh, in my inventory just in case. But yeah, that is all I have for this video. In my opinion, this is a really good card and a really good addition for your inventories, especially if, since it's a free to play and farmable card. But yeah, please let me know in the comments if I said anything wrong or if I missed anything. And as always, stay tuned on my YouTube channel for more Tower of Saviors content, and I will see you next time. Take care, and see you soon. Bye!